Hi everybody, I'm DJ. Welcome to the pilot of my potential bad animation review series, DJ's Cartoon Crashes. You know how Ben the Uni inspired me to make a YouTube rant on Yoris Griffin? Well, my latest YouTube obsession, the mysterious Mr. Enter, got me into the crappy animation reviewing business. As I'm getting older, I start to think a little deeper in how animation is written. I thank Mr. Enter and TV Tropes as two of my influences in such thinking. So now, I decide to do my own analysis on a crappy episode of an otherwise good show. If I'm successful, it can spawn to a semi-regular thing on my YouTube channel. But if so, please don't expect me to review well-known bad episodes that were already tackled by certain other reviewers, such as One Course Meal from Spongebob, because I don't want to be a redundant reviewer. My purpose is to express my thoughts on lesser-known crappy excuses for episodes that I personally find to be atrocious. Episodes that were never given a good separate video frassin' before. Well, with that intro out of the way, let me review an episode that I've been dreaming of taking down in video form, with a GAME! The worst as told by Ginger episode ever made, at least in my opinion, although Battle of the Bands and Fair the Quality are fighting for that title. Now, you may already know how I'm a huge fan of as told by Ginger. It's one of my all-time favorite Nicktoons, and next to The Simpsons, it's my second favorite show from Kwaski Chupo. To simplify, I normally appreciate nearly everything about this down-to-earth show, with the obvious exception of Ginger Fatwee's so-called BFF, Dodi Bishop, who is one of the poorest excuses for a friend ever to embrace the television. And this episode shows a fickle resentful little counterfeiter at her worst. While this is the episode that made my hatred for Bishop escalate, it isn't the episode that got me into hating her in general. Thank you, Dodi's big break. But yes, that episode, along with any other Ginger episode where Dodi's a from a voice of friends to fair the quality is nowhere near as abysmal as Wicked Game. I will never give the events down. Seeing Bishop at her worst drove me to the point of whenever I think of the word backstabbing, I think of Dodie Bishop, particularly in this atrocity. Now, I wasn't too sure whether I should do a separate review on Wicked Game or even as a top entry on a potential project called My Top 8 Dodie's a Bad Friend Episodes, inspired by Mr. Enter's Top 10 Patrick the Prick Episodes. When I thought about it, this episode is too horrendous to not deserve its own standalone video review. If Wicked Game isn't the part from Opus 4 as told by Ginger, I don't know what is. Though, like I said, Battle of the Bands is a high contender, especially concerned how it was a Courtney Griffin torture porn. Wicked Game raised my blood pressure like no other episode of any anime series could, and this one perfect girl is the main reason why it's one of the worst, not to mention one of the darkest, episodes of As Told by Ginger. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's tear apart the worst thing to come out of Kwaski Chubo since their robot yoga. No, actually, I'd rather say that than Bissell being this exasperatingly bitter. So, this child of animes in hell starts out with the Yoko More Than Radio announcing that Ginger is returning from the Avalanche Arts Academy. Oh, and this just in. Ginger <laughs> Foutley returns to Lucky Junior High today. Yes, I must note to you folks unfamiliar with As Told by Ginger that it usually goes by these ongoing story arcs and you, Joey, emphasis on you, Joey, has prominent continuity. Wicked Game takes place right after the season 3 premiere, Far From Home, which overall I find to be a good episode, except in the first part where Dodie is a whiny b not wanting her friend to abandon her for so long. Yeah, some other time I'll talk about it. Anyway, Dodie and Macy Yifoot are obviously excited for Ginger's return, having spent days of Courtney Gripper and Sora filling in for Ginger. As you can see, Dodie is the most excited because she has this girl crush on Ginger or something. Elsewhere, the show's true antagonists, Miranda Kilgallen and Mipsy Mipson, aren't so optimistic. If you want to understand what's up with them, just watch Far From Home. I have no time to explain here. Dodie and Macy are ready to give their honest welcomes to their best friend, while Miranda and Mipsy point out their sarcastic Greetings. Then the 80 of the hour enters Yucky Junior High, and she's gone man! Yes, at the end of the previous episode, Ginger and her next door friend Darren Patterson shared a love epiphany in a very heartwarming moment. So now they're an official couple! But as we all know, their hopes of making out in the night yet will be at risk of being destroyed. So basically, Ginger is so caught up with her new love that she ignores Dodie and Macy, even her enemies she pays no attention to. Then again, why should she pay attention to those asswipes? And why should she still keep in contact with Bishop? In the assembly hall, Ginger and Darren meet up with their so-called friends. 
Hey, what's up, kids? See you wearing Darren's shirt there. Actually, I haven't taken it off since he sent it to me. Gross. Well, now it's gross that you have an orgasm at each time Courtney or Ginger is an inch away from you, Dodie. So, we tried to surprise you at your locker this morning. Really? Yeah, but I guess we were too late. Oh. <laughs> we saw you at the hallway, though. You did? But you didn't see us. Oh. Well, I see you now. Yeah. Well, I guess I better get up there, huh? Sure. You better, yep. Get up there. Well, that... <laughs> Reunion was awkward. Dodie and Macy obviously aren't so happy that their plans to welcome Ginger back then went their way, and Ginger herself doesn't seem too comfortable with her so-called friends. Is this supposed to be a sign that Ginger, Dodie, and Macy must be far apart from each other for their own good? Well, so terrific! Now all we need is an anvil to fall on this up. Why we coyote style? No younger self, Ginger feels sheltered in the shrubs that is Dodie's powers, which screw over Ginger's incense, which tell her to drop this up as her BFF totally. I understand that C and Macy miss Ginger, but it's kind to the point where Ginger seems to be their equivalent to life support. That's... That's a messed up mentality to say the yeast. Now onward the Carl subplot. I must tell you from now that when it comes to as told by Ginger episodes I dislike, it's normally for the main plots with Ginger and friends. Because, number one, I care about the Carl and Hootsie story slightly less than Ginger's, for reasons I don't necessarily need to explain here. Number two, Carl and Hootsie have a near immunity to upset me personally, since they're as likable as their respective sisters. And number three, when I was writing my big fat rant on Dolly Bissup, which Wicked Game and Seven Arts episodes are reviewed in, I'd mostly skip past Carl scenes to focus on the crappy main plot. So what I'm trying to say here is, it's hard for me to find any Carl and Hoodsie plots to trust and hate with great passion to the extent of whatever crappy Ginger and Dodie story. So please forgive me as I intentionally don't go into much detail in the subplot here, as well as not talking so angrily about it. Well, however bad Carl's story is, I'd rather watch it than the awful main plot. Anyway, Noelle Sussman and this crazy bird girl named Polly Schroedster are playing some card game. Polly wins, and Noelle uses Carl in a bet for some reason. You are now property of Polly Schuster. Starting Friday, at the stroke of three, and pretty much through the weekend, I'm afraid. She's going to force you to dress up like a bird, then play Parrot World. Parrot World? Moving on. As Ginger talks about her time at Avalon's Arts at the school assembly, Dodie, Miranda, and Mipsy make a big deal over Darren being beside her. Okay, I understand with Dodie, but why the hell exactly do Miranda and Mipsy want Ginger to pay attention to them anyway? Aren't they always trying to get rid of her or kill her mentally or something? Either way, they're ready to start a drastic plot to ruin Ginger and Daryl's happiness. Mark my words, she's going down like the Titanic. And the first thing we need is two extra captains to help sink the ship. Yeah, Fozier gave a bare male finger to the Titanic victims than you two bimbos. What do you get when you cross the Atlantic with the Titanic? Halfway! Ah! So, the Grey Knight monster has been Dodie and Macy, but mostly Dodie, and the hell that is this episode is about to get worse from here. At the cafeteria, Ginger is about to sit with her quote-unquote friends. And just as Dodie says that she's for relief, Darren isn't around, bitch, he pops up. And Bishop is none too happy. I am not gonna cut anything out of this awful exchange. Hi, sweetie. Look, saved my corn. What if one of us wanted your corn, Ginger? Ever think of that? Good gravy, woman. That's a nutritionally useless starch. Not the point, Macy. Not the point. It would have been nice to be offered. Uh, do you want the corn, Dodie? Not from you! From her! Want it? No, thank you! Wow! I think this sees Darren as a ban for existence, despite previously getting along with him. My god, I'm surprised that the kids in the background didn't turn around to see Bishop barking at poor Darren like a friggin' Doberman pincher. It disgusts me so much how this perfect excuse for a human being only wants Ginger all to herself. It's especially ridiculous given how she barely even shows gratitude for her position as Ginger's so-called friend. Bishop, either improve on yourself or get the hell out of Ginger's life entirely!
the worst part of the episode has yet to come, folks. So, Carl is now probably a Polly the Bird girl. So, Hootsie suggests that Carl is a break up with Noelle. Okay, so apparently, we have two Royce and Sip Jared Dyson stories for the price of one. Although, you might want to cast in a couple more quarters for Ginger's plot. After school, Ginger, Dodie, and Macy are about to discuss Ginger's stint at the Avalanche Arts Academy, when, surprise, surprise, Darren shows up. Darren, we were right in the middle of talking. Take a hike. Dodie! Okay, now, I obviously can't take Bishop Akniak Oscar the Grouch, but I'm gonna side with her for just a moment. In general, I'm not totally comfortable with Darren popping up by Ginger's wide-open window whenever the hell he feels like it. And don't get me wrong, I love and support Ginger and Darren's friendship turned Royce and Sip. They're cute, they're sweet, and it's not every day we see prominent, positive, interracial romances on kids' TV, yet they own on Nickelodeon. However, that shouldn't excuse them to be possessive over each other. They need to think about when exactly it is necessary to see each other. And in this case, all Darren does is show Ginger a pair of shoes that cry out their quote-unquote, undying love on it. Is that really worth interrupting the girl's conversation? Conversation, Darren. I mean, could you just wait until the next day at school to show her that? Or after Ginger's so called friends leave the room? So, I understand why Dodie gets annoyed here. Ugh, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Dodie, I care, okay? But that son excuse her for storming out of Ginger's room at the very sight of Ginger and Darren showing their facts in. I guess Dodie said bye first, only she did it without saying bye. You follow? <laughs> oh, Macy, no matter the situation, you always make me chuckle. So anyway, Dodie huffs and puffs and blows her top off all the way home. Planting himself right smack in the middle of our friendship. And Ginger is letting him. Oh, I suppose Darren will be in on our nightly phone calls. And Darren will be consulted on out planning. If he thinks he's taking over my territory, he's got another thing coming. Seriously, who's the main antagonist of this show? Miranda or Dodie? Also, don't call another human being your territory. It's kind of dehumanizing, to say the least. Speaking of Miranda, C and Mipsy happen to be at Dodie's doorstep, ready to brainwash her into their plot to keep Ginger and Darren away from each other. That and Mipsy wants to catch up on dental hygiene. I shouldn't even say brainwash because seconds ago, we just saw Bishop saying that she wants another thing coming to Darren, just so she can get Ginger all to herself again. But of course, being the usual counterfeiter that she is, Dodie tries to hide her wickedness with her so-called devotion to Ginger. What do you mean? We know you want him out of the picture, and you know you want him out of the picture. The only thing left to decide is how to get him out of the picture. I don't want to betray Ginger. I don't want to betray Ginger. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because the episode of Yice and Friends in particular established that Bishop is so above backstabbing Ginger. God, what the frick is wrong with this girl? Of course, that's a rhetorical question. And I just wish there was some way I could give her a derenectomy. Wow, it's so easy to talk to you guys. We take great pride in that. Thanks, you two. See, I really just want to get my best friend back. We understand, and we intend to help. Say, say, did I tell you that it'll be a piece of cake for Dory to join those fellow witches? In the girls' bathroom, the three witches try to brainwash poor Macy into their scheme. Now, you may expect Macy to talk herself and the others out of the scheme if she had anything resembling a conscience. Macy may be a spineless girl who doesn't always have the strength to fight for her own opinion, and instead would mindlessly side with either Ginger or Dodie no matter what. But even she can't possibly allow this abysmal act of betrayal from happening. Yeah, Yon herself getting talked into- Why, hello there, Darren. Dodie and I did not see you there overhearing our conversation. Aw, oh, frig you, Emily Capnack!